be here talking about residential. There's a lot of goodies we're gonna go through. Here's who you're gonna hear from. You can hear from me, I'm Mark Rogers out of Chicago. Jim is going to close us out on ERC. Right after me, you're gonna hear from Crystal out of Green Bay. She's gonna be talking about utility sales tax exemption. And then Shannon will be talking about low income housing tax credits. All right, here we go. Today's agenda, um, EIP, USTE, LIHTC, and ERC. So a lot of acronyms. Look at this, $1.2 trillion. So the climate economy was born out of the Inflation Reduction Act. The Inflation Reduction Act has very little to do about reducing any inflation, everything to do with energy. It's a large energy bill. Back when Manchin and Biden shook hands to get this through, the CBO said over the next 10 years, $374 billion of goodies will be handed out. Because a lot of these incentives were uncapped, which means the more you ask, the more you get, Goldman Sachs came back probably about three weeks ago and said 1.2 trillion is actually going to be handed out in the next 10 years. So the takeaway here is you got to ask for it. And before you ask for it, you have to know what it is and see if you qualify. And that's what we'll go through today. Moving along to another opportunity is our utility sales tax exemptions. These are sales tax refund opportunities. They are applicable to the various industries here, the residential living facilities, which we're going to dive into today, but then also just take note that they are also available for manufacturers and in the agricultural industry. And this is across multiple different states. Again, I'll show you kind of where the qualifiers are and which states are eligible, but these are the players for the utility sales tax exemption. What it is, is many states will exempt from sales or use tax, the fuel, so propane, natural gas, firewood even, and the electricity that's used as primary residential heating fuels. That'd be the electricity for your residential areas, sometimes even water for residential use, you're paying sales tax on, but you shouldn't be, there's an exemption there. Residential customers can include many different senior living um, facilities, depending on the state. It goes through senior living apartments, um, independent living areas, the intermediate care facilities can qualify, and some states even allow nursing homes. It all depends on the state and the level of care, and ultimately down to the statutes, what's, what they're qualifying as residential. We're going to cover a lot of information on the low-income housing tax credit in a short amount of time. So. So let's get started. Uh, not everybody is familiar with the low income housing tax credit. So let's just really start with the basics of, of what is what is the credit. So the low income housing tax credit was enacted in 1986 to encourage the development of low income rental housing. The credit is allowed over a 10 year period beginning with the year the property is placed in service or if the taxpayer so elects the following year. This is what we call the, the credit period. Um, the credit rate is calculated so that the 10 equal annual installments have a present value equal to 70% of the cost of the units or 30% of the cost of the units, depending on how the deal is structured or financed. And this is what we call the 9% of the 4% credit. You'll hear people refer to it as that. The 9% credit is available for projects without any federal subsidies and can include new construction projects or rehabilitation costs of an old building if certain thresholds are satisfied. And then the 4% credit is available for new construction with federal subsidies or acquisition costs of an existing building. And I'm going to talk to you about today about the employee retention credit. So the ERC initially came out in 2020 as part of the CARES Act has been extended, uh, expanded, and retracted over three more tax laws. And while this isn't new law, there are still a lot of questions about ERC, and I'm sure you have an inbox full of providers trying to claim ERC for you. And you're probably asking yourself, gosh, am I missing out? Um, you could be. 
right? Um, some areas where we see a lot of ERC opportunities include the hospitality industry, right? Restaurants, hotels, senior living, churches, healthcare, um, and then community colleges. Nonprofits and for-profits can qualify for ERC. Some governmental entities that specialize in healthcare can qualify for ERC in 2021. There are a lot of rules around ERC and eligibility, which we won't wade into today, but uh, that's kind of a byproduct, right? When you get three, three different tax laws. Um, but if you think you qualify, please, please don't hesitate to reach out.